Hey guys, are we live? Because I had some troubleshooting to do. Whew. That was a nice little quick troubleshooting. Awesome. Neil says it looks good, so I think we're good. See. Yes, I can see myself on the Bip or Twitch. Okay, I'm going to grab something to drink. Like, give me two seconds and I'll be right back. Thank you so much. All right, drink is there. Can y'all hear me? I think we're good, right? How have you guys been doing? Let me get the chat in the screen. Whew. That was kind of nerve-wracking. So, for any of you Twitchers out there, I couldn't log out of my I Live Here account. So, I couldn't input the Bitbird official Twitch stream key, like last minute. I should have checked that out. Anywho, it's working. So, let's get to it. Can I turn up the volume of my mic? Um, I'm already close to clipping. So let me see what I can do. Is this better? How is this? I'll just go talk straight into this mic because this is a bit of a weird thing. Let me see. Let me just put some stuff on there. Cool. I think that should be good, right? Clipping can be very good. I love paper clips as well. Yeah, I got the compressor going, so we should be good now. Wow. There's a lot of people joining. Like usually when I do my I Live Here streams, it's like three people. <laughs> so thank you for coming by. Um, I'm going to be talking a bit about mixing and mastering today. Um yeah, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do yet, sort of. I think I want to answer some questions in regards to mixing and mastering first. Like I want to see what what the main uh things are you guys are struggling with and what I guys can what I can help you with. Um, then I'm going to be mixing and mastering, uh, the beat song Holo made last week. Um, show you how I would go about that and then answer some more questions, I guess. And we'll just see, let's just have some fun. So if you guys have any questions, Drop them in the comments or in the chat, rather, because it's Twitch, not YouTube. Let me see. P 
landscape. Oceans here, flaws is here. All them people are here. Wayne Brando is here. Damn, there's a lot of people. Mixing kick and bass, that's a good one. How loud the bass should be. I can answer that question real simple. It's however loud you want it. But I'm going to go more in depth about that. Tricks to mixing lead sounds. Having them sound big, but not overdone, if that makes sense. Yeah, I totally get you at straight point. Any tips where to put things in the stereo field? Every time I try to mess with it, it sounds trash. That's a good, that's a good one. That's what I see a lot in most mixes and masters where a lot of the where the stereo image is sort of fucked or it's either too much or too little if that makes sense um, let's see what else I'm getting multiple instruments in the same frequency range working together nicely yep any tips on mixing drums EQ and compression and saturation that's it but I'll show you in a bit I think still need more volume I should talk louder I'm sorry let me turn it up just a tiny bit how is this this is way too loud I think Okay, cool. I'm not I'm not going to turn it up any louder cuz it's going to be too much. 8 OTTs is definitely the sweet spot. Thank you, Tor. Say hi to Vinny for me. So, I have a question for you guys, actually. What makes a good mix slash master for you? Like when you listen to a song, like what's what's the thing that stands out the most? You can be as vague as you want. You can also think about it for a bit and drop a comment about that in the chat. But what makes a good mix slash master for you guys? Well, balance. Nothing nothing should be bothering. I love it when it has a clear intention, definitely. No, well, at Blade Sounds that that's that's not the point. Like we we can all do this. I'm sure we can. If I can do it, you guys can do it. But it's it's more like uh, what what makes you say, okay, this this song is well mixed, well mastered in comparison maybe to your own work as well. Balance, space, depth and texture, overall vibe. 
the element of surprise. Balance clear. Let me hear every element clearly. That's an interesting one to me. Paper ocean. Because I don't believe that is true. Because here's my opinion on <coughs> what I think makes a good mix slash master. And that is that that there have been choices that have been made. Like Flaswin was saying, like the intentions are there. I think that that is the most important thing. Like when you can hear the message of the song and what it's trying to say to you, basically, or how you listen to it. And I think there's a very broad, broad picture of what makes a good mix or a master. It's not very narrow. Like there's a lot of different styles of music, genres, kinds of music, loud, soft, compressed, dynamic, classic to ambient to like hard rock to EDM stuff to dubstep to anything in between. Like there's so much out there. So the broadness, there's a broad, spectrum of what makes a good mix in my opinion so yeah let me see okay good questions by Viance about loudness he she or they them asks so question about loudness when I'm done mastering should i export two files one with minus 14 lufs for spotify and one max loudness for every other streaming platform what should i send to the distributor so what i usually do is make one that fits all the normalization thing with Spotify and all the other streaming platforms is just so when you have a playlist and one is louder than the other or the other way around, everything gets played at the same volume. So it's a target loudness. Um, you can be as loud or as soft as you want. So what I do is just make the one master and that usually works for everything. Pronoi Music makes a very good point. If the music sounds good, then one doesn't need to do a lot of, a lot to the master. That's very true. Do you know why there's even mastering engineers to begin with? That might be a good question as well. Let me see what blade sounds. Comment it again. Yeah, I think that's the best way to check if your mix is done. Send it over to pr 
produce her friends, see what they think. Like the thing is with with mixing and making songs in general is you can get so lost in the details of everything. And I try to be hard on myself in terms of deadlines. Like I, if I feel like it's done, it should be done. If I don't feel like it's done and my brain is done at that time, I just simply take a break do something else come back to it the next day um yeah and the more you do it the more um confident you get in it as well so yeah you'll get there for sure i i w I, I had that as well in the beginning i was like how do i do this like there are so many options and so many opinions as well on like the whole thing and a big disclaimer to you all, um, what I'm saying today is take it with a grain of salt. This is just my opinion. It's not a law. So you can do whatever you want with whatever I say today. So, to come out to why do mastering engineers even exist, back in the olden days, when everything was recorded to tape, and nobody had tape players at home, someone had to put it on vinyl, or cassette, and later CD. That was the mastering engineer's job and still is to this day to some degree um, there's a little more creativity I think um, but in the end it's um, the mastering engineer's job to get it to sound as good for the intended medium which today is mostly uh, digital streaming services and like Spotify, Amazon, Tidal, what have you, and also a little bit of vinyl and a little bit of cassette as well. But back in the olden days, it would be transferred from this medium, which was tape, to vinyl, which was a completely different medium with um, completely different characteristics as well. So food for thought no I, d I i sort of live here like i'm i'm here most of the week so yeah i i sort of live here but this is not my home if that makes sense Yeah, Shrill, I completely agree. Like, uh, that's why I started m sort of mixing and doing more mastering in the first place. Because I like it a lot and I think it's a cool thing to do. And as much as an art form as well. Like, there's mastering engineers I look up to that have changed my point of view forever. Let's see. How do you get close to zero dB without peaking and distorting the sound? Um, I use compression and soothing with the limiter, but still can it can't get it that loud. I guess it's the mix. Most likely at Fiance, but it could be that the low end is taking up a lot of space because the thing that triggers the the final limiter um, especially or generally really like compressors limiters is the low end it takes up it takes up the most voltage literally so 
um, yeah, turning down the bass could help or rebalancing that or making the whole thing less loud. Yeah, I swore to live here. That's it. <laughs> Hell yes, I'm gonna show you some tricks. I I think I'm gonna switch over to Ableton soon. Studio investments. Do you see that rock wool over there? I have a couple more packs of that. I just did a job that was taking up way too much of my time. Um, in a good way, though. So um, I'm building some acoustic treatment for this room soon. So it can sound even better. Yes, I'll check my Instagram messages after uh after i do the beat mix so i'm gonna be mixing and mastering sans beat for the guys that just joined and i mean the beat that he made last week on stream i'm gonna structure it out a little more i think because looking at it it's just a simple loop right now so i'm gonna stretch it out a little more make a sort of mini verse to it and then uh go from there i guess shall we jump to that because i've been talking for 22 minutes already i have had way too much coffee today by the way and i'm drinking some red bull so i'm hyped hyped All right, let's switch that screen. Welcome to Ableton again. You've probably seen this a bunch of times. Yeah, I know they're not good for my health, but I need some energy. I'm sorry. It's the weekend. Living on the edge a little. <laughs> yes. Uh, I did not mix any of Drulu stuff. Vin does that all himself, and so does San, just FYI. I'm just mixing this beat. San does all his mixing and mastering himself. Um, I've been with him in the studio for the last two albums. Uh, but I'm just there as a second pair of ears to check if there's anything missing, if I'm feeling anything, if I can make any su suggestions. But he does all his mixing and mastering himself. Just FYI. N needed to get that out there before people g would get confused. valid question there it's er, wow um, I'm just gonna call you baguette sorry that's a really long username so I was at stand recording studios last week um, to mix quote unquote which is a big term term for that um, son's upcoming album in Dolby Atmos so what Dolby Atmos is, is a sort of uh, 360 degree type thing where you can place objects, in this case, or certain instruments in like 360 degrees. So I could have percussion back over there or over my head or stuff like that. And that is what I did. So mixing is a, a very big word for that. What I basic basically did is pan everything um, a little differently. So it could be played back on like headphones and bigger um, 
a 5.1 and 7.1 Dolby systems, if that makes sense. So I didn't do any real mixing there. I basically was just panning everything in a 360 degree space, which is really interesting. Yeah, it was Viance, it was brain melting at the beginning. <laughs> I was like, what the hell is happening? But it's super interesting. I've I I've learned a lot from the from the process and I hope it's something that that will latch on in the in the future. It's still in the early stages, but it's super interesting stuff. Um so yeah, straight point son did all his like the the normal stereo uh stuff you're gonna hear on Spotify and stuff. That is all son. All mixing and mastering is done by him. Um the Dolby stuff, like the three hundred and sixty degree stuff is done by me, basically. That's it. Alright, enough talking. Um how should we go about this? I'm I'm gonna have a listen to this first, see where he left off because I didn't really check his stream last week. I did for a bit, but yeah, let's see. <laughs>
Okay, cool. So first thoughts are that I'm going to clean this up a little bit. Uh, what I usually do when I get a mix or a mastering job in is I clean up the session, see what's happening. I saw a lot of clipping here as well. It's super loud for no reason. <laughs> Sorry, son. Yeah, this, this, this looks great. Um, stuff like that. I'm just going to clean it up a little bit name everything take it from there I'm sorry, Niels just told me it's very loud. I, I'm I'm turning down the master as we speak. <laughs> so I was sort of clipping everything, which is fine. But I'm just going to turn it down a little bit. Sorry for your ears. So this is how I go about for every session I do. Just clean it up, make it a little more insightful for myself. 
just to see what's happening. I remember that from last week. Great little thing song made here. I absolutely adore it. Let's see. So he routed everything to this group. So I changed the whole thing. Cool. Business as usual with song. Boop. Turn this off. That doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, so section group. Cool. Just gonna get that out of there. This is more like a pad, I believe. Cool. So I'm gonna just stop talking. Yes, it's not finished. I know. It's just a quick little beat, um, but I'm just gonna start messing around and maybe you guys can learn from it. If I feel I need to explain anything in between, I will do that for sure. I have fun. If you all have any questions, just drop them.
when I uh, usually do things like this, like mixing type things, there's no rhyme or reason in the beginning to what I'm doing. I'm just trying things out to see if they work. Um, yeah, and there's some go-to practices I use. So yeah, more on that later. Let me keep going for a bit. I actually forgot to do something that I always do. Let me go do that real quick. So whatever I do, I always um, make a bounce of of the song as it came in or as I left it to begin with, which right now is only a snippet. Um, just so I can compare it to everything I'm doing to see if it's, um, if I'm doing it any better or not. Where did I leave that again? Oh, let me just drop it right here. It's always a good thing to do in my opinion to have a reference mix of where you left off just so you can quickly flip between the two and see if you're making progress or not nope don't save um yeah sure i'll take a question Yeah, I'll get I'll get into all the routing of like the the kick stuff Son did as well. Okay. Good question. Radar? Is it Bradar or Brother or let me know. Um what are your tricks to make sure your track masters have dynamics as well as being loud enough at the same time, sort of a truce or middle ground between them? I think you sent me a message on Instagram as well, right? Um so there's no such thing as a loud and dynamic mix, if that makes sense. It's sort of, the it's either one or the other, I think. Um, <coughs> that being said, a dynamic mix and master could sort of be loud, but only in certain parts. Um, like, for instance, if you have a verse that is pretty soft and it goes into um, the chorus that is pretty loud that's yeah like it sort of depends on the song as well it's it's a difficult thing in the end it's 
doing whatever you're most comfortable with if you think the song is finished then it's finished if that makes sense B Radar sorry I totally butchered your name but to answer your questions if I have any tricks for that I'm I'm I don't really have tricks for that per se. I think that's all within um within the mix itself. Like I do a lot of mastering for other people, so the the, the dynamic slash loud part is already pretty much determined in the mix, if that makes sense. Um so I try to accentuate that if if need be and if i want to make it more dynamic for instance uh what i often do is um turn down like put a utility on the master fader for instance like right here um and say i want to have like the intro softer than the part that is coming after that I'll just drop a utility in this case or any game plugin there. Um, just turn this bit up, uh, this bit down so it can go to zero again here. That's the sort of trick I do in mastering to make it more dynamic. Cool. I'm going to get back to mixing this thing. Be right back with the question.
Pro tip, boys and girls, always check your fades. What do I mean with that? So, how am I going to explain this in the most clear way there is? Let me see if I have a good sound here to demonstrate. Right, so let's... drop it down here so do you guys actually know what I'm talking about already or not could be that you guys already know so if you want to avoid like pro noise said pops and clicks is what you most likely get when you put two audio samples after each other. Um, and what you have is that these audio waves, these waves don't align. And since we're in the digital world and not in the analog world, because we're in the computers, and we're working with zeros and ones that that is what the computer is calculating this is most likely gonna create a click or a pop do you hear that click at every first time the note hits How to solve that is if you crossfade either one into the other. So as you can see, the waveforms dissolve into each other. Now we only have a click at the first one. So this is before. This is after. Nothing. I'm going to teach you, Thor. This is the way. So this is how you fix pops and clicks. So now you only heard the pop in the first one still. What you can also do is instead of crossfade two samples into each other, let me undo that, is that you could also choose to do this. Now what this does, as you can see, it essentially turns down the volume of the waveform, making it a straight line again. So this could be a way as well. The only thing with this is, is that you're going to have a little silence in between. Since this is a very short fade, it's not very audible, but let me exaggerate. So yeah, that's how you fix that. And this is always good to check because these pops and clicks are usually loud AF. And it's gone like magic. And that happens a lot. That still happens a lot. So it's 
I think it's important for everyone to notice. If you have two audio samples next to each other, check the fades. All right, cool. Let's get back to actually mixing. <laughs> Vieira Alec makes a very good point by saying these are not rules, but what I find with those pops and clicks is uh, that usually down the line, this shit is get gets worse or gets amplified by the mastering done. Um, and then it goes to an MP3, and then you hear all those pops and clicks, and it sounds like shit in my opinion so once again it's not a rule um but i hate hearing those clicks there's a couple of examples like um do you guys know the rapper sl as in just the letters sl kenny beats did a b for him um and you can hear a lot of pops and clicks in that track. And I think it's just, um, it's a shame in that regard because uh, it's such a good song. I really love the song, but the beat drops out every once in a while and then it gets back in and you hear like the, the click. So it's 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 a preference thing, but yeah. So yeah, definitely not a rule, but it's something everyone needs to know, at least. And, and like I said at the beginning, do whatever you want with all the, with everything I'm saying today. All right, let's get back to it.
Now this is more of a stylistic choice, more of a preference choice, and not really something that suits the song. <laughs> <laughs> I know some of you will think, what the fuck is he doing? And some of you might think it's dope, and I really don't know what to think of it yet, but it's just one of those things you try out, and that's what mixing should be about. Trying out new things, figuring out new combinations, as long as it's fire. Yeah, th and that's all subjective as well. If it's uh, if you think it's fire, then it's fire. I'm not sure yet. We'll see. Let's have a little listen to the whole thing. Pro tip, always turn the noise buttons off. Because this is giving me a shit ton of noise right now, as you can see. Down here, down here, down here. And if you have, like, ten of these in your mix, it's, uh, it's going to be a lot of noise, just FYI. What do you guys think of the mix so far? So for reference, this was what Son left me with. Let me turn that off a little bit. And this is what it is now. I do like the pianos in his version. Let me 
me uh, tweak that bass a little bit more. That bass and a piano needs to be a little bit more predominant, in my opinion.
I think I'm sort of running out of ideas for now. I think the mix is there. For me, like, I could go on and on and on, but it's a little, little bit. I like it. Once again, this is before. I like it. Let's start answering some questions. Let's see what has been happening in the chat because I haven't been looking. Let me see that master chain. There you go. There's nothing on there right now. That's how I like to mix with nothing on my master chain. Damn, y'all have been talking a lot. By the way, thank you for hanging out with me, looking at me doing some a bunch of things. Like I, I don't even know what I'm doing. Half of the time, it's mostly true thri trial and error that I've learned all these things. So yeah, let me see. Uh, best EQ plugins for cuts and boosts. Uh, Fabfilter Pro-Q3 for both, if you want a clean EQ. I'm also a big fan of a couple of other different EQs, all in the box that are emulations of real things but things I would love to own one day if I'm cool and have a lot of money <laughs> <laughs> but yeah the Pro-Q um, I could that's like the desert island plugin like that Pro-Q uh, what's another one one of those desert Desert Island plugins. Oh yeah, I have uh, I have this thing. Uh, what's it called again? It's a uh, cloned after a manly very mu compressor, which is. Um, a compressor I'd like to own one day, but is very expensive. It's a tube compressor. And this is a plug-in version that I like a lot. That sort of comes, as it doesn't come close to the real thing, but yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a sauce for me, for sure. But I'll show you guys in a minute. And like the Pro-Q 3 is one plug-in, this one, the the Pulsar, is it Pulsar? Yeah, Pulsar Mu. Limiter slash compressor. And the Fat Filter Pro L2, which is the third desert island. Let me see. Yeah, I'm going to get on to mastering in a bit. I just uh, need to take a little air break for a minute. Otherwise, I'm going to make stupid decisions. You're our nightclub party for 2021. <laughs> Can you explain what you did on the kick? Yeah, that might be a good idea to go down everything I did and try to figure out what I just did. Uh, let me look at the questions real quick. Uh, 
Loving the streams. Thank you so much, Dueling Peaks. Any advice for an aspiring mastering engineer? Listen to a lot of different music. And I mean, like, all types of different music. Um, and listen to them from one source, if that makes sense. So, uh, what I did a lot prior to this is actually just put on headphones and listen to a lot of music when I was going uh, on the train or to places or anywhere or just in my bedroom or whatever, just listening to music and s sort of trying to analyze what's happening uh, emotionally and how that would translate to um, like EQ settings and stuff, what's happen happening frequency wise and compression wise and um, that and I I, I sort of watch every I think or at least a lot of different videos on YouTube and listen to podcasts um, from other mastering engineers looked up their Spotify's looked at what they were doing how they were doing it and sort of thought about how I would like to uh, do the process um, and sort of have my own accumulation of all those things and that's what I'm trying to aim for and uh, yeah I'm getting closer to that goal every day I'm definitely not where I want to be yet but that's the fun part it's like it's it's a it's a ever evolving process and that's what I love about music like I'm not going to be the ma the best mastering engineer or mix engineer or musician ever there are a lot of people out there that are definitely doing a better job than me but I do what I do, I guess. So, yeah. Just go for it. Have fun. So, well, Schwirl, the stock EQ from Ableton is, is great. Um, it's definitely like a, a go-to for me still as well but the thing for me is with this EQ is that if I do this then it's already a 5 dB boost if I do that with the Pro Q I sort of have a different weighting so if I go to the next line it's a it's a free dB boost instead. I could make that bigger and make it like a 10 dB boost as well. But it's like Pro-Q is a little more refined for me. Um, it also has different phase settings, which gets handy in mastering situations. Uh, but I'm not going to go there because it's, <laughs> it's a very technical thing that you guys shouldn't be worried about at this time you can all look that up on YouTube and see how like linear phase and natural phase works with in regards to EQs because that's how EQs work they phase shift the whole time Decap versus Saturn. Ooh. Um, both. I think Decap is more um, more raw. It also doesn't have oversampling. 
which is a whole different beast. And Saturn is way more, um, you can get way more in depth with that. And it gives a more, um, I think a more clean saturation, if that makes sense. <coughs> Isotope ozone is amazing. Don't, I don't care if you use it. <coughs> I still use the limiter from time to time i think it's a amazing product set um i'm not sure if i'm a fan of the sound per se but um i know son used it a lot on his albums and singles from i think from the beginning actually so it's it's definitely a, a super valid product and it it works wonders um especially the limiter is is great in my opinion i use it every now and again um because it has a different sound than a fab filter pro l2 for instance or a waves l2 or any other limiter it has its own sound which can be useful it's like we're talking about splitting hairs here in terms of how different the sound is, but there's definitely a, a characteristic to it. Let me see. Yeah, I, I, I got a lot of questions in my Instagram on, on mixing low end. Um, and I think the main thing there is is uh, to choose which of the elements is going to be uh, the main part of the of the low end spectrum so with this song with the song song holo song we just i just sort of mixed the kick is very very short and punchy and although you can see it has low end here Turn up my volume a little bit. It's a very short, dry sound. So that leaves a lot of room for this guy here. I think that's that's the main thing um, to choose which sounds have the absolute low end in there. And what I did with this piano is not much really, because it's a octave higher than um, than this one than the original bass line. It already gels well because it complements each other. Um, but yeah, th I think that's the main thing with mixing low end. Also, adding to that, monitoring is very important. Like, um, get a decent pair of headphones. Uh, I think y'all know this one, right? Wait, let me get, uh, where's my camera? It's the Audio Technica's AT, what's it again? I'm getting old. AT, ATH M50X, it's like 150 bucks, something like that. Or before this, I used the Sennheiser HD 25s a lot. Um, like I know, Son's first album and second album, like the majority of that is mixed on those headphones. So on the Sennheiser HD 25s. Like if you have a, a solid source or a familiar source of where you're listening from um, 
those things will get a lot better. And I definitely recommend headphones for mixing. Especially if you're starting out, because um, putting speakers in a room is so difficult in terms of acoustics, because you have to take that into account as well, create a sort of perfect triangle between you and your speakers. Now I have that set up here in the studio. I'm, I'm lucky to have that, but it's also my work. So I sort of have to um, have a good monitoring system. But yeah, if you're starting out, get a pair of headphones because that will be the most solid um, reference point as well because it's always the same wherever you go, basically. And I think that helps out a lot with um, trying to figure out um, the low end, if that makes sense. Okay, let's go more. Straight point, what helps me is the sidechain EQ between the kick and sub. That's a good one as well. I like that. Let me see. I'm glad that helped out a lot. Affiance. No, and I don't want to be Jacob Collier. <laughs> I have much respect for him, but I don't. I just don't like his music. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I offended anyone with that. Yeah, like that. The sub is if how to know if a sub is at a good level. Uh, that's all to taste. Um, yeah. I wish I could give a more concise answer. I'm 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 more of a philosophical guy than a technical guy, if that makes sense. Even though I'm mastering is my day job, so. <laughs> I'm sort of technical, but when it comes down to listening to music, I try to forget all that and just listen to a song and see how it makes you feel. Um, like Prince, uh, what's that Prince song that has no bass throughout the whole song? Like that could be the perfect amount of bass as well. Um, and, and I think... I don't know if you guys know Kali Uches. She has a song called In My Dreams. It's a really good song as well. And there's no bass throughout the whole song. Or at least like no sub bass. Um, and those tracks have enough bass as well. So it's 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 it all comes down to whatever floats your boat. I know that... Um, Like there's there's all I'm 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 here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make a little uh Spotify playlist. After this I'll how am I gonna do this? I'll drop it in the Discord, I think. In the Bitbird Discord. And it'll have a couple of songs with varying degrees of bass. Y'all can figure it out for yourself. Like, what is what is enough bass? And it's so song dependent that there's like not enough. Um, what was I saying? There, there's not a standard. It's like it all comes down to taste. So I know that's like the floaty answer, but it's the only answer I can give.
Yep, I just have exciter. It's also insane. Sorry, I'm. Uh, I think I'm a little um, behind on all the questions. Let me see. Uh, I don't like the Bayer Dynamic DT eight eighties, but it's I'm um, I'm just not I just don't like the EQ curve they have. They're great headphones, they're just not for me. Anything Bayer Dynamic I put on my head, I I immediately cringe. It's it's just not made for me. I'm not yet crashing from all the caffeine. I'm still super hyped about this, guys. I'm talking way slower. That's not a good thing. I need to get more caffeine in me. <laughs> uh, best free limiter I can recommend. Ooh. Um, I think, does Melda make a limiter? Like anything, Melda is always amazing. Um and also let me look this up real quick Yeah, so uh, I haven't bought it yet, but I'm probably going to do that soon. Uh, where is it? So this thing is pretty amazing uh, I don't know if you guys can see it so it's the TDR limiter 6 the gentleman's edition um, I have the demo version so I can't recall the settings but it's like a an all-in-one thing that is pretty pretty good it also has a loudness meter in there as well And I think it's like 50 euros if you buy the full version. But yeah, you can download a demo on their website. That's, let me drop that in the chat. Just so you can guys can see. That is a pretty solid um, limiter. And Ableton limiter is totally free. Five hour stream on LFO tool. I have never used LFO tool in my life. Confession. Uh, let's see. I think I'm going to take a quick little break. Like two minutes um, like I have to go pee really bad and I'll be back with you guys in a minute um, and uh, I'll just keep this on loop for you guys so you can guys can listen to something and then we're gonna go on to mastering stuff I'm not playing IDs tonight sorry guys also I don't have any IDs at the moment <laughs> All right, I'll see y'all in a bit.
back again. Shall we go on and just master this thing? Let's do that. All right, I'm just going to do this. If you have any questions, leave them in the chat. I'll answer them after this. Also, uh, it might be wise to turn down the volume a little bit because it's going to get quite a bit louder in a bit, just FYI.
Cool. How do you guys like it? I think this is it. I'm I'm happy with this as much as I can judge it right now. Like I don't usually do mix and master sessions in one go. Um, <coughs> what I would do is listen back tomorrow. Like make a bounce right now. Listen back tomorrow morning. See if anything's still sticking out. Um, and go from there. Basically, if I feel like anything is sticking out, then it's for me to fix those things. And if it's done, it's basically done. So yeah, let me let me see where we started from from San's session with the single glue compressor on top of the thing. Yeah, okay, cool. Just making sure this is not going through the master process. So what I did is I um don't output it to the master because then it would have all these effects on there. But instead, what I do is um, route it directly to the external out uh, to the monitors, which is one and two. So this is what we started with. <laughs> obviously isn't mixed at all he just made the beat on stream and called it a day which is obvious And I, I I do like this sound somewhere, but it's just a little crushed. If I would, what I did now is purely based on what I like. Um, and if I were to take like Sans taste into account, I would do things totally differently. But today I just wanted to show you how I would mix this song. So here's before again. <laughs> Is that level match? I think this is a little softer. through the project a little bit I'll just go through it uh, track by track show you what I did like the, the most of the things in this track is just cleaning up basically I didn't do a lot of creative quote-unquote creative things if that makes sense it's more more just cleaning up and sort of trying to um, yeah balance it and, and make the parts shine, make it have a little more dynamics. Um, so yeah, let's go through it bit by bit. Let's see. Yeah, so what I added to the kick is, <laughs> is just a little saturation because I know Son likes that. A little EQ. 
just cleaning up the tiniest bit. What I did after that is duplicated the track, the kick track. So it's essentially the same track with sort of the same settings. This one has the roll off a little bit and that is the kick for the verses. Why I do this, um, like duplicate the track is so I don't have to do any automation. Um, so when it comes to the verse, the kick gets a little softer, a little warmer. That's the only reason I do this. I think it's the quickest way to do this. And it also gives me more freedom to alter it after. Like if I would if I were to draw in automation, say from this point on and I have the kicks play here on the same track and draw in like the this automation and stuff and write down the volume as well. Um that's pretty much set. Um so it's it's a little it takes a little more more time to alter once you once you've done that. So that's why I usually separate the two. Just so I have a little more flexibility. Uh snare. Oh yeah. A lot of reverb. Yeehaw. Um a little decapitator. If you don't know this plugin, it's a saturation plugin. Could have gone for the Ableton Saturator as well. Um, this is sort of my go-to for for snares. I don't know why. Um, I just like the sound of it, and I get the thing done as fast as possible. I think that's the that's the most important thing with um, with mixing is to get. Uh, to the envisioned sound as quickly as possible without um, with as little effort if that makes sense um, so I did that and that little dynamic EQ just to sort of compress that high end And yes, I need to turn down this a little more. Actually. So the plugin's not clipping. Let me turn that back up. So now we're in a good spot. And what I did with that is send it to a send. To this send, which has a reverb on there that's fully wet. And what I did, uh, usually I wouldn't do this big of a reverb, but um, it's a, it's this song, sort of, it's, it's a floaty song, so it can use some, like, space and dimension, if that makes sense. Now, do you hear where, uh, like, the, sorry, um... The reverb is like a little behind the, <coughs> the behind the snare hit itself. So it goes. Ah, ah. That has to do with the pre delay. Um, and why I did that here is. So it gives a little more rhythm to it. It's 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 like these tiny things to me that add up and that make the biggest of differences. <laughs> the reverb is just there and 
this gives a little more rhythm to it. So it's a fun thing to play with, the pre-delay. Cool. Did the same thing with the snare. Did the same thing with the snare as I did with the kick. Um, and in this one, I think it's, yeah, the same decapitator settings, same EQ settings as well. Uh, did send a little less to the reverb and made it softer, obviously. The distorted crash type thing is something I didn't do anything with other than roll up this a little more. So it's a little less of that distorted kick that is in there. So it's really just the symbol you're getting. Then the whole sidechain group um, bass didn't do a lot there. Like the 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 noise that was on top there, that's what I wanted to make a little bit less here, so I can turn up the actual bass a bit more. And what I wanted to do here in this frequency range is in like the three hundred range is make some space for this piano, which has no EQ on it whatsoever. <laughs> like if you were to listen to, let me grab a fab filter once again, just so we can listen to it. If we were to go to that 300 range, like this is sort of where the meat of the piano is happening. And the sound I like the most. So what I basically wanted to do in that bass is have that bass be all the low end, a little bit of that high end, and be that uh, have that piano be like the sort of mid low mid range type thing. Um, this piano, same practice as the, like the kick and the snare, taking off the reverb, turning it down a bit, didn't do anything else there. Uh, oh yeah, well, I wanted to make this more stereo, like the, like the lead sound. So what I put on there is a micro shift, which is a chorus um, plugin. Could have used the the standard stock chorus plugin from um, from Ableton as well, but this gets the job done quickly for me. So that's why I grab these things, and I'm lucky to have those things. Let that be said. Uh, once again, same thing, splitting them up so I can have control over like the drop element and the verse or breakdown type element, turning this down. Uh, synth Lee, did I do anything there? I don't think so. I think this is just how it was. Yeah. Split those up as well. So I could do a little bigger roll off of the highs there. So I could sort of fit the vibe of the, the song a bit more. Uh, didn't do anything to this, I believe, as well. Yeah, I think I rolled this off a little bit more to make some space for these bad boys. <laughs> Let's see. A little EQ um, taking because it's like a, a high sounding part. It doesn't need all the low end in there. It's going to cause more trouble in the end, like in the mastering stage. Mm -hmm. 
did a little bit of compression on these just to sort of sort of tame them so they would sound a little more a little bit more even uh with a slow a slowish attack because i want that song has this beautiful sound before <laughs> that's the <laughs> that's the shittiest imitation of like sounds pretty sound but he has like a beautiful click type of thing with his with his pick when he strums um so i didn't want to lose that attack like i if i You would sort of lose that definition, and that's what I want to keep in there, but I want to make the rest of the notes a little more even, so that's why I did that there. Let's see what we have here. Same here. Actually sort of complementing. So this is the guitar lead EQ, and this is the guitar chords EQ sort of have the same thing going on I guess but since this is going through the middle and this is going hard panned left and right um, that way you can also create space for each other yeah those vocals I think you've seen what I did there and I didn't do anything of it in the end <laughs> but that's the beauty of mixing you, sometimes you just try things and sometimes they work sometimes they don't what i left on is this eq which is another emulation of um, a hardware piece by mag it's the mag eq4 uh, plugin alliance made a beautiful copy of that of that plugin um, and it has this cool air band which is just works I don't know why it just works um, so yeah into a little bit of chorus filtered some stuff out there that I didn't like yeah if I had more time I would try to find a good in between of having those clicks in there and having not those clicks in there or sort of trying to smooth them out a bit more if that makes sense also added the auto pan in there to give it a little more movement so here is with and without That's that, I think, yeah. So I left this on mute, and I don't know what this was. Yeah, I like these better. Cool. And then we came on to mastering. So <coughs> here's my thought process on mastering. Um, usually my first thing is to get these two uh, pro L's on the back end and why I do this is as follows because I don't like true peak limiting it um, how am I gonna explain this It sort of fucks with the sound in a way that I don't like. So what I rather, what I would rather do is stack a couple of limiters to keep away the intersample peaks. Intersample peaks is a whole nother discussion, and that has to do with the oversampling here. Um, 
that is something I could go into more detail in in a in a later um, master class Twitch stream type thing. Maybe it's what I love. I would love to do that actually to go more in depth on like each plugin and stuff. But I've been at it for a good three hours now. So yeah. So this is basically. Um, what I'm doing here, if that makes sense. If I would not have this last limiter on there, it would, um, it would still give us clipping right here probably let's check <laughs> it doesn't give us clipping now because it's in still in the digital realm in 32 bit float which doesn't clip which is a whole nother discussion <laughs> Um, so this is a safeguard for like the right one is a safeguard for when it um, when you export it so it doesn't have any clipping anymore uh, what I did after that is add this beauty and the pulsar mu which is an emulation of a manly very mu compressor if you don't know what that is, you can look that up on the World Wide Web. Um, it's basically emulating a tube compressor, which um, works in 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 different ways than a normal compressor would, because tubes tend to give some saturation as well. So the interesting thing about this compressor is if you pump up this input dial you can get some saucy saturation going which is why I love it so this thing beyond sort of 16 dB is what I have found is when it starts to sort of break up which is <coughs> um, also always my starting point for this compressor so what I usually do with that is drive some gain into it. And that's why I have this thing going on, the utility in the beginning. That's just to give more gain or less gain depending on uh, the song and how loud I've mixed it. As you can see, I've been fairly conservative with the level I've been mixing at. It's something I would definitely recommend. Um, the masters I get in are um, are anywhere between like minus eighteen to minus three dB. So it it really doesn't matter how loud um, the mix is per se. Um, I always sort of set it to a uh, to a level that works for me and that works with the plugins I use. Gain staging is a very big thing, which is a whole nother discussion. Um, what I have right here is the Ozone EQ, and I have, uh, I have it set to mid-side. So what that does is it gives you two of these pages and one page gives you um, all the EQ that you would do that is coming out of the middle. So I'll solo both. It sounds a bit weird. Um, but this is everything that is coming through the middle. So this is just a center signal. You can hear as soon as I hit solo, the sides go away. And 
then so the, what I heard in there was just this thing that I didn't like at 731.41 hertz <laughs> <laughs> and I took out minus 1.2 dB like there's no rhyme or reason to that it's just listening seeing what works seeing what doesn't work and that is all to taste for me so uh, what a mid-side EQ also does is give you the opportunity to work on the sides which is uh, the thing where you usually don't want to have any like low low bass um, like it's not a rule but generally speaking I like it when the low end is focused in the middle so I try to cut that out of the sides so all the bass information is in the middle like this sounds weird as hell but but this is what is happening all on the sides and there was this this build a that I didn't like and what I always try to do or at least it depends on the song and on the mix is you give the sides a little bit of a boost in the highs so it widens up a little bit so that's how I use a mid-side EQ then we have the T-Rex soft clipper which is a beautiful thing in my opinion it's sort of in between a limiter and a compressor uh, what it does is anything anything that gets <laughs> so let me exaggerate this real quick and I'm gonna turn off everything after that turn this down turn it up way too loud so you can actually hear what it's doing Um, anywho, the clipper is um, also a little bit of distortion, but this is way too much, obviously. We can get somewhere in between. Let me go back to all the settings I had. Holy cow, what's happening here? <laughs> Minus 29 dB, that's a little bit hefty. Let me put this back to, what was it? I think it was this, sort of. So it gives a little bit of distortion and sort of shaves off the peaks, especially on the kick and stuff. Um, so yeah, I like using that glue compressor to basically glue it together this is sort of emulated after a uh, SSL the famous SSL bus compressor if you don't know it look it up it's a interesting thing yeah I'll, I'm sorry I'll get that mic sorted as soon as I can um, so yeah that's a little bit of the master chain Any questions? Are there still? Oh yeah, there's still. Oh, wow, how is there still people here? <laughs> Thank you so much for hanging with me, guys. I really appreciate you. I hope this mic thing is uh, sort of good. Yeah, it's it's hard to balance when you've got mastered stuff playing. I'll turn this down a little bit. Can you hear me now? Anywho, I think this is uh, sort of it. 
You guys got any questions? Oh, that's a good one. What settings are you looking for? Um, it depends. Let me sort of export this. You have a couple of options. Um, these are the settings I use when using Ableton. These work. Leave the dither on. And make two versions. Make one 24-bit and one 16-bit. And name them appropriate, appropriately. Sorry. Um, and in terms of headroom, I have... I usually... I'm, I'm trying to figure this out with my mastering stuff. Because Spotify recommends a headroom of minus one. Um, which I get because they um, they play a sort of MP3 type thing. So if I bounce this out at minus one, <coughs> that should be enough headroom for them to convert it to an MP3 type thing. Um, and what happens is when you convert it, convert this to an mp3 is you get those intersample peaks so the peaks get louder and if you're not careful enough you get peaks that go over zero maybe i can uh, show this yeah i can show this so let me bounce this out as a wave in an mp3 it's going to take a while probably but Meanwhile, we can answer some questions. Uh, yeah, sure. Hero boy, you missed a lot. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to bring it to you, but um, you missed a lot. I do not cut at 20 hertz and 16, wow, 16 kilohertz on your master. That is something I've never heard of. Also, um, it's it's truly dependent on, uh, on the song and on the material. Um, I'm, uh, I'm a little tired, but I'm doing good. Glad you guys are enjoying. My thoughts on panning. Ooh. Um, whatever floats your boat. Like I didn't pan anything today. Um, the song did that for me and I liked it. That's it. Brick wall EQing is something I've never heard of. If you mean brick wall limiting, that's... Um, or you mean like the, oh wait, I can't do that right now. Where's the, is it done already? Damn. That's quick. I didn't expect that. Can I show that? Do you mean like, this style brick wall EQing. Trying, um, I've never heard of tri triangular or circular panning. Um, I have no clue. Do you mean like LCR, so, so like left, center, right, and more sort of spread out EQing? Uh, sorry, panning. Um, back to the brick wall thing. Sorry, I'm, I'm starting to get all over the place. I never do this on a master because it fucks with phase. Um, but yeah. 
I've seen it. I've seen it done in like like dubstep stuff. It's I don't roll like that, but yeah. If it works, it works. And the same goes to the panning. I don't have a uh, I don't have a opinion on that. I'm doing great agent McCarn McCarn. Second question. How do you recommend new and seasoned producers from combating a writer's block as well as preventing our own depression soup? Music should be fun. That's it. Don't force it. Um show up. Like I think I think that's a thing I did um, for a while is sort of have a schedule in place and just show up go for it and if it's a good day it's a good day if not if not and like with my own music I'm I'm a terrible songwriter um and like 95% of the music I make is shit and 5% is pretty decent um so yeah that's like the ratio I have with making music so the don't feel bad don't feel too bad if 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 it don't goes to plan immediately be patient um I don't do mix critiques I'm sorry What's the story behind the name I live here Um I was walking to a train station um of where I used to ne- live nearby um and it was a beautiful day outside the sun was shining and I thought I live here and that sort of that name of or that phrase popped into my head and sort of stuck with me and it's been with me ever since that's the story behind that um guys I'm done <laughs> I'm tired Ugh, it's been a good one though I like doing this. I want to do this more and go more in depth on like one subject. And um, I felt this was a little bit all all over the place, but it was definitely fun to do. Um, So, yeah, I'm going to sign out. I hope you guys enjoyed. I think this will be online as well afterwards and will be on YouTube and stuff. So, David, good luck with all the time notations on YouTube. (laughs) And uh, thank you guys so much for hanging out. I appreciate y'all for taking the time. And I hope to see you soon with a better mic. Have a good weekend. Good luck with all the music you guys are making. And uh, love you. See y'all soon.